This is internet sharing under system preferences. Here you can actually share your Wi-Fi uh, with other Ethernet connectors if you want to be able to uh, make your laptop or your computer a DHCP server. Here I have an IP address. This is my static IP address of one of my Thunderbolt connectors, which is 10.30.30.201. Uh, some things have changed in Yosemite. I'm using 10.10.1 in Yosemite, and uh, it's a little bit more complicated, and we will get into that as we go along. I also have a second computer here, too. That's 10.30.30.200. And that computer has a second network on it that's set up to automatically get an IP address from a DHCP server so we can show the functionality of the internet sharing. So we'll just log into this computer and I can go here and show that it has no connectivity right now because we're not running that service and here I can show that it's set up to automatically obtain an IP address from a DHCP server. So if I go to internet sharing and you share it out, what it does is it'll uh, send out an IP address that is uh, a a 192.168.2 address. Uh, and as soon as I turn this on to the other screen that I showed you is where it actually will create a P list. And so we create a com.apple.nat P list here. And I'm going to open this up and show it to you. This is what one looks like when it's just created. And uh, we will go in and edit this as we go through this a little bit more. But this is a sort of a, what a clean one looks like. Now one of the things that internet sharing does is it corrupts your IP address. So if I go here and ping myself again, I get nothing. So what I need to do is go back and reset my IP address. Just setting it back to the normal address and applying it. This uh, still does not fix the issue. I guess I probably wouldn't expect it to do that. But I wouldn't expect it to corrupt my IP address too. So I'll go ahead and set it to another IP address and then set it back to my 201 IP address and that will fix the issue. Now I can go to my uh, other computer. I'm using Cord to go to the other one, and I can look at it and see that, uh, or it hasn't yet, but I can disable this and uh, enable it again, and it will go out and pick up a DHCP address that my computer is now kicking out. So there it is, 192.2.6. You can see it right there. I won't bother to go and try to ping it because I'm in a different subnet. But it is working. I have verified this, and this does work. Uh, now the other great thing is when you actually go into your internet sharing again and turn it off, it does another great thing which is corrupt your IP address. So I have to sort of go through the same procedure again to reestablish my IP address. I need to set it to something different. Saying that the same thing doesn't work and then I can set it back. Another thing you can do is you can also change the default IP address. And uh, I have an Evernote here that shows a uh, the commands I need to do and but if you need to go and find it, if you want to see it, then you can 
actually just add uh, you know change the default subnet for your internet sharing Yosemite and it'll bring you to an article and the top of the article has uh, anything before Yosemite and then if you go down to the bottom of the page these are the information that shows you how to enter the commands to uh, change the default IP address for Yosemite so I'm just going to use these and I'm going to do these in terminal and I'm going to sudo these. Got to be careful not to triple click on it because that also carries the carriage return as well. So you have to select it as it is. And I'll go ahead and edit these numbers as something that I would uh, probably normally not use, but just to show you that you can set it to other things. So in the past, all it ever asked for was a start number, and now it requires a start, an end, and a network mask, which is actually really good because then you can make it a small, uh, a small number of things instead of taking a whole um, subnet because there's a lot of cases where you don't necessarily want that to happen. Now if I go back over to my NAT P list, um, I can take a look at that. Oh, then another thing which is important too, which I didn't do is uh, typically you want to quit preferences uh, before you change these things as I've come to find out. But this, in this case, it actually uh, keeps them but I will go ahead and check it by turning it off and turning it on uh, a lot of times you got to be careful when you're changing a lot of these numbers because it will hold them in cache and you'll go and make a change of these numbers and then uh, you'll go back and turn it on and turn it off and you'll be back to your old numbers again So just checking this out, got my internet sharing on, now I turned it off. Now I'll go and check out my plist and my numbers have remained the same. So I'm good to go. So here's my IP address, and of course uh, it has corrupted it, so I need to go ahead and fix that part of it. Now I can go to my other computer and enter in my credentials. And uh, you can see that it's still holding on to the other DHCP address it was given. And there it is. And all I need to do is go ahead and disable it, re -able, enable it again, and then it will uh, work for you. There's my number. And I can go ahead and ping that number to verify it is working. There we have it. And now we'll go disable it and we will set things back to the way they would normally be. Here I can go into sharing and disable the sharing. And of course, and once again, it has corrupted my IP address. So I need to go reset that again.
Now I'll close my system preferences because I want to delete this and make sure that it goes away and doesn't come back. So there I close my system preferences, delete it, and then I can go into my sharing and you can see that my Thunderbolt Ethernet stuff is cleared which shows that it's done. And that's all.